talk about competition a little bit because my God, we're we're hyper focused on beating people, on being right, on on competition. I'm afraid of it. I need to work harder. Like, un, uh, talk about that a little bit and how we can shift that culture. So my 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 life and my work has been very much influenced by <clears throat> a philosopher named Dr. James Karst, who in the mid 1980s. Uh, define these two types of games, finite games and infinite games. Um, a finite game is defined as known players, fixed rules, and an agreed upon objective. Football, baseball. Um, there's, if there's a winner, necessarily there have to be losers. Um, and there's always a beginning and middle and end uh, to a finite game. Uh, then you have infinite games. Infinite games are defined as known and unknown players, which means you don't necessarily know who all the other players are, and new players can join at any time. Um, uh, the rules are changeable, which means every player can play however they want. Uh, and the objective is to perpetuate the game, to stay in the game as long as possible. So we're players in infinite games every day of our lives, whether we know it or not. You know, you, you can't win education. You can come in first for the finite amount of time you're at school, where we agree upon the time frames, the school year, and the metrics, grades, but we don't Nobody wins education, nobody wins learning, nobody wins healthcare, nobody wins global politics, and nobody wins business. But when you hear the language of so many people, they talk about being number one, being the best, and beating their competition. Based on what? Based upon what agreed upon objectives, metrics, or timeframes? And this is a problem. Because when we play with a finite mindset in an infinite game, and we play to win in a game that has no finish line, there are some very predictable and consistent outcomes. The big ones are the decline of trust, the decline of cooperation, the decline of innovation. And when people become obsessed with beating their competitors in a game where there is actually no winner, right? You, you, there's no winning career. You can get a promotion, sure, but there's no winning career and there's no winning in business. Um, and so beating your competition is actually based on what? Based on revenues, profit, Based on what? One year, five years, 10 years, the lifespan of the company? Like, wh what? what? This, it's, it's all nonsense. It's all made up. And so we spend so much time reacting to what another player has done rather than focusing on how we can improve. And so one of the things that I've learned is to completely eliminate this idea of having competitors, which is I have no competitors in my space, none. There are other players who, who do what I do. And some of those players do some of the things that I do better than me. And those players are my worthy rivals. And it is better to respect and study your worthy rivals because their strengths reveal to you your weaknesses. Um, and if you can have your weaknesses revealed to you, that means you can work on your weaknesses. Because ultimately, as individuals or as organizations, we're in a state of constant improvement. That's all we're trying to do is be better today than we were yesterday, be better tomorrow than we were today. That's all this game is, whether it's your life, your relationships, your business, whatever it is, it's a game of constant improvement. And so to obsess about beating your competition actually takes us away from constant improvement because it might make us do something uh, short term or it might make us do something expedient because it gives us a short term leg up or use cheaper ingredients or trick somebody or, you know, because it can drive revenues. And all that does is weaken our own organization. That's all it does. That's all it does. And so uh, I don't think of competitors at all. I think of worthy rivals. And by the way, worthy rivals can change. You know, I get to pick who they are and I get to pick the reasons that they're my worthy rivals. And I'm in a state of constant improvement thanks to them. And sometimes it's something small and sometimes it's something big. Um, but I'm grateful to all those who do similar things to me because it makes me a better player.